Well, good afternoon, everybody. Patrick Evans here in the kitchen again. And uh, this week, I decided to do something I haven't done in a long time, and that's make a dish called chicken caprese. And it takes a little prep, and we're going to go through all that. Uh, and uh, I'll show you. I did a lot of the prep already, but we'll go over here and we'll finish that up. And then we're going to pan saute some of this uh, delicious chicken caprese. And I'll tell you, it was funny. My wife said, if this is one of your favorite dishes, why haven't you ever made it for me? I'm like, I'm making it tonight. Uh, it actually is really based on chicken cutlets, which is something my grandmother loved to make and my mom loved to make. And uh, so whenever my dad was out of town, because he was a beef guy, uh, mom would always like to have a chicken dish. So we would do these chicken cutlets. But then there was this great restaurant. Hi, Tish. Hi, Judy. <clears throat> there was a great restaurant in Cathedral City. You guys probably remember it. Uh, cellos. Tom and Bonnie ran cellos. And this dish was a staple on their menu from when they started to uh, when they finally uh, closed up. Uh, and I missed that restaurant. I missed Tom and Bonnie. It was a great place. But Chicken Caprese was on their menu. And I went back in the kitchen one night with Tom. And he kind of showed me how it was done. So we start with a traditional chicken cutlet. And then there's a little something that goes on top that's real easy. And uh, again, the prep time is what's going to take you the time on this dish. Otherwise, it's very light, quick, and delicious to make. And I think it's something that the whole family's really going to enjoy. And I know I'm drinking red wine with, um, I'm making chicken. But <clears throat> it was too early for Jack Daniels, and I'm just not a white wine guy. So cheers. Let's get started. I hope you can see this. I don't know how well you can see it. I'll move it over a little bit. But there's parts of the kitchen you're really not supposed to see. <laughs> All right, so what we did is we took a chicken breast and we filleted it out, okay? So you just put the heel of your hand on it and cut it right down the middle lengthwise so you get a nice thin piece of chicken. This is what it will sort of look like right there. Uh, it, and this has already been floured and pounded, but this is the one thing that makes it nice and tender. You kind of beat the heck out of it, if not really. Just lightly tenderize it with your meat uh, mallet. And during these days of quarantine, um, it helps you get some of the frustrations out. So, I did these already. <clears throat> these are ready to be pan fried. Uh, they're already pankoed up, all right? But we'll do the last one. So I dredged it, well, after it was pounded, you dredge it with a little flour, all right? Just, just get it covered. And then we're gonna put it in our egg wash. Not for too long, you don't wanna soak it. You just wanna dip it. <clears throat> I did make a mistake today too. I used a bowl that was way too small for what I'm doing. My father would have a fit. He always said, use the tools that you need to get the job done. And I, I failed on that account today, but we're going to get this. So I've got panko breadcrumbs. You can get these. Uh, you can get them pretty much anywhere. We bought them at Trader Joe's. But we got the plain kind, so I dressed them up a little bit. I put in some fresh Italian herbs and some Parmesan cheese and some garlic salt and pepper. So <clears throat> that's how I made the panko a little more italian -y. but you can buy it already seasoned like Italian breadcrumbs. I use panko instead of the breadcrumbs. It comes out crispier. I think you'll find that this is a, a better alternative than traditional breadcrumb, but however you like it. My, this is another thing. My dad did not like panko breadcrumbs. Never did. <clears throat> All right. I'm going to let that sit for just a minute and kind of let it... Um, firm up just a bit. It's been fun digging up some of these recipes. And uh, so what we've got are four nice pieces of chicken that were pounded thin and then dredged in a little flour. You can see that, right? Looks pretty good. And we haven't even started cooking yet. So dredge them in a little flour, egg wash, and then use the panko. And like I said, I dressed it up. So <clears throat> this is what we used. Just good old-fashioned Trader Joe's regular panko. But I got a little fresh Parmigiano Reggiano. Look at that. The light's acting a little funny, but you can see it. Isn't that nice? Okay, so that's Parmigiano Reggiano. And I chopped up uh, some fresh basil, dried it out just a little bit. And I'm going to use this to finish off the dish as well. So we're going to finish it up with a little basil. But the other thing you got to prepare in advance, and this is why you call it caprese. I've diced up some beautiful tomatoes and used some pearl mozzarella, and I've made a nice little mini caprese. It's, uh, you know, the, the little tomatoes I use, uh, let's see, these 
sweet little grape tomatoes. They're delicious. Slice them up, cut them about half, two, uh, thirds, and I use a great tool. If you guys don't have one of these, I recommend you get one. It's a tomato knife, and they're great because you can actually, and I, I'm watching for the dogs. They're, they've cleared out. Is Guinness around? Uh, anyway, these tomato knives are terrific. You can get them online, and you can actually slice the tomato, and it cuts the skin before you mush the tomato, which is always kind of the issue with regular knives. So I use that, use those, and then for the mozzarella, get good mozzarella, the kind that comes in the water, okay? Uh, I use the pearls, the little tiny ones, so I didn't have to dice up uh, a, you know, a chunk of mozzarella. Mozzarella was always a treat in our family because when I was growing up in Charlottesville, in the 1970s, you couldn't get fresh mozzarella, they didn't make it. Uh, so we had to bring it in from New Jersey. My uncle had to bring it in the trunk of his car. We felt like we were running a, a smuggling operation. All right, I've got my oil up to uh, temperature. We're gonna fry these off. I'm gonna make this so you can see it a little better. Let's see. There we go. All right. So, one thing I'm doing here, I used in that pan, it's not olive oil. I use grapeseed oil, and I'll tell you why. Olive oil has a low smoke point. I think it's about 200, maybe, maybe a little higher than that. But I use grapeseed oil because grapeseed oil has a much higher smoke point. And the trick here is to get the chicken nice and crispy but cooked all the way through before the breadcrumbs end up uh, you know, getting totally burned. So that's why I used the uh, grapeseed oil so I can cook it at a little higher heat. And what I'm going to do to take these out, we'll put them on this. All right, now we're ready to go. Grapeseed oil is nice and hot. And we're just going to, oh yeah, that's just right. That is just right. those in like that. You don't need to cook them all that long. And I'm going to, here, I'm going to show you guys. Let's get you a little closer. All right. So that's the pan with the grapeseed oil. Uh, the chicken caprese is frying up nicely. So we're going to let that do that until it's a nice golden brown. And the chicken's been pounded nice and thin. So you know that it's going to be done all the way through when the breadcrumbs indicate that they're done. So that's kind of your doneness test for this. You don't need a meat thermometer. You just kind of keep an eye on the color of this beautiful chicken. I've made way more than I'm going to eat, but that's all right. Uh, I need to give a shout out to our oldest, uh, Karina, who turned 15 today. Happy birthday. Uh, they are off doing, she's social distancing, but I think she's waving at her friends from about 12 feet away. So that's good. Uh, but happy birthday, Karina. We're happy to celebrate with you. So we're frying these up, and when these are done, you're gonna plate it, and then we're gonna put some of that caprese salad, fresh caprese right on top of it. And the other nice thing, grapeseed oil doesn't come with a lot of flavor to it. Okay, so you're not imparting that wonderful EVOO flavor into this dish until you put the caprese on it. Because what I've done here is I've diced up my tomatoes, thrown in my mozzarella, and stirred in just a little bit, hey Nadine, uh, a little bit of extra virgin olive oil, right? Just stir it around. Uh, threw in some fresh basil. I'm going to put some salt and pepper in that, and then we're going to dress the chicken when it's done. And we're going to check on that right now. Let's see how we're doing here. Oh, that's coming along nicely. All right. So, again, the important part about the prep here is getting the chicken pounded out nice and thin. Hello, Bill. William Senso there. Uh, Mr. Sauls, how are you? How are things out near Phoenix? You doing well? Uh, this... David Salz is watching. He's, a, he's an amazing, not just chef, but bartender. His drink creations are really terrific. Hello, Mr. Grasmick, watching from Charlotte, uh, from Chicago. Billy, hi, how are you? All right, so I'm keeping an eye on my chicken. I don't want to overdo it, but I don't want to underdo it, of course. Check out, I'm coming along, coming along. I've always said that this burner is my least favorite. That one's better, but this one's closer to the camera, so. Uh, <laughs> Stephen, uh, yeah, I do talk like a time. Hello, Jennifer, how are you? Mr. Wall, how's the practice of law going, sir? I hope you're doing well. 
So, you know, we've been home a lot. Uh, I've been ordering out a couple times. Uh, over the weekend, we called up uh, Tequila in Palm Springs. They've been doing curbside service. The Purple Room's doing curbside We're trying to support some of the restaurants that we love that are doing curbside service, but it's also fun to do a little cooking in the kitchen. So, and it's nice to break out recipes. I haven't made this recipe in a long time, as my wife will tell you. All right, that is beautiful. Oh, that's just right. And again, in the panko, I put a little Parmesan cheese. So that's gonna have just a lovely, lovely, slightly herbal, uh, just a nice uh, basil, little oregano I put in there, and that Parmesan cheese. So you see how beautiful those are? And again, with the grapeseed oil, you can cook it at a nice temperature. You're not gonna burn your breadcrumb, but you are gonna get your chicken cooked all the way through and you're not gonna smoke up the place. Problem with olive oil when you're doing uh, kind of more high temperature things is you end up, you reach that smoke point and then the olive oil doesn't taste as good. So anyway, we are just about done with this. And I was gonna do some green beans with shallots, uh, but we ran out of time because I was busy prepping the chicken. So here we go, we got this coming along beautifully. Oh, and this smells really good. That Parmesan cheese in the panko is terrific. So anyway, and again, if you don't want to bother whipping up your own Italian seasoned panko, uh, the flame is actually fairly high, Cheryl. That's a good question. Uh, on this burner, every burner is different. But on this one, I had to turn it up fairly high to get the kind of heat I wanted. Uh, so you're going to turn it up to, say, most stoves, I'd say medium high, not quite all the way up to high. Because you don't want to burn it. It's still a nice, little delicate piece of chicken in there. Let's check and see how we're doing. About another minute or two. Oh, yeah. That is lovely. You can hear the sizzle. Uh, and you can always, like I said, you can, you can always buy Italian seasoned panko. It's just like the regular breadcrumb. And if you prefer regular breadcrumb, you can use that for this dish. But I really highly recommend the panko. It's, it's just better for this application. And it comes out nice and crispy. Oh, that's just about there. All right. All right. Okay, so take a look at that. Now, I think that's done just about perfect, okay? And again, once you get that golden brown, you know that the chicken is done all the way through. Um, I'm going to finish off this dish. I'll cook those up when we're done live. What did I do with my... What did I do with my... Oh, here it is. <clears throat> all right, so I've made up that delicious mozzarella tomato salad, the caprese. And one thing I do like to do when I plate this up, oh, this one looks good. All right, how about that? Doesn't that look good enough to eat? So we're gonna put that there, and then I'm just gonna give it a little sprinkle of the Parmesan cheese, all right? Just a little sprinkle of Parmesan cheese like that, boom. And then, you know what I forgot to do? this a little salt and pepper just like that everything is better with a little fresh cracked pepper on it voila stir that up and again this is just fresh tomatoes olive oil fresh mozzarella a little basil not a lot just a little bit of basil all right and then you just put the caprese just like that right on top of your chicken breast. There you go. That, my friends, is chicken caprese. <laughs> Guinness and Ryan showed up when it came out. So there you go, you can do this at home. I'm gonna post the recipe. It's super easy. It's the prep time that takes the most amount of time. Uh, and it's a great dish. I love it in the summertime. Uh, even though you have to kind of slave over a hot stove, it's okay because it comes out with this nice light. You got the salad right on top of your entree. Serve it up with some fresh uh, green beans or a little broccoli and you got a great meal. 
So that's Chicken Caprese, and it's based on my grandmother's chicken cutlets and Tom and Bonnie from Cello's and their wonderful recipe for Chicken Caprese. Thanks for checking it out. And again, I'll post the uh, recipe uh, online in just a little bit. Manja, stay safe, stay home, be well. Thanks for checking it out.